tired of losing. Ah. We got to figure this out <laughs> very, very quickly. For my team to get this dub, it's huge. What's up, guys? Mike here, and welcome to the return of Coors Light. Yes, the return. We are on schedule now. We are going Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Those three days every single week during the NBA playoffs, we will be posting on Coors Light plus bonus episodes. You will see. I think you will agree the more daily style approach is going to be better because Jimmy G Buckets remind Bulls fans everywhere, including me, how much we miss this man. Now, am I the only one who ever finds himself rooting for two players on different teams, such as Jimmy Butler, drafted 30th by the Bulls, my favorite team, and Giannis, a man who I personally want to see succeed at the highest level. Giannis has given me my personal greatest NBA moment as a fan ever. I don't know how you could ever top this. <laughs> Now, back in 2015, Jimmy began all of this by averaging 25 points per game against the Milwaukee Bucks. We know in the 2020 bubble against the Lakers, Jimmy stepped up, averaging 26.2 points per game after averaging under 20 in the regular season. Then against the Hawks last season, Jimmy averaged over 30 points per game after averaging around 22 in the regular season. But at this point, at this age, what are we watching? Does ESPN have a probability chart for us, boys? Here's what I'm talking about. Out, if you don't know my ramblings win probability 98.3 percent chance to win for the milwaukee bucks bucks were up by 10 points here five minutes 35 seconds left to go if you had a 98.3 percent chance to get 10 million dollars or die do you take it here we go jimmy butler so right here i think when you see a play like this you're watching a guy tap into natural instinct in a way that not everyone can do the thing with jimmy butler is his confidence with the steal too all right milwaukee bucks can we believe in them as a championship team anymore an epic 10 plus point collapse so now at this point in the game the bucks are hitting right but jimmy butler bang jimmy butler has this ability not only to continue to raise himself up as this shot against Drew. Come on now, come on now, come on. So the question we're left with is, is Jimmy Butler the greatest playoff performer without a ring of all time? And the answer is just clearly yes. We don't even really need to get into it. I'm rooting for, I wanna see game seven. So let me know what you guys think down below. Moving on to our second talking point today, we have Dylan Brooks and we have one of the most confusing, you know, I'm not confusing. Honestly, one of the most unadmirable things someone can do, okay? If you're gonna go the villain route in the NBA, you can take it back. LeBron took it back. People forget LeBron tried to be a villain. Then he apologized to the nation. So after LeBron went to the Miami Heat, he got a lot of heat. It's right there. The people of Cleveland were not happy at the time for their hometown hero to go on national television and say he's taking his talents anywhere but them. So LeBron though, he decided to embrace the villain role and it backfired miserably. And so he actually though, sat down with Rachel Nichols. You know, after the finals, I sat in my room for two weeks, did absolutely nothing, talked to absolutely nobody. You know, you start to hear the villain, you know, now you have to be the villain, you know, and I started to buy into it. So no more LeBron in the black villain hat? Uh, no, I'll leave that to his game. Okay, so we have LeBron sat in his room for two straight weeks, not talking to anyone. He pulled a modern day Batman. That's a Batman move. What'd you learn, LeBron? I don't want to be a villain. I want to be happy out there. And you know what? Good for LeBron. That's what he wanted to do. So I'm not even hating on that. But Dylan Brooks, same season? Dylan Brooks said this, the media making me a villain, the fans making me a villain. And then that just creates a whole different persona on me. Brooks said on why he got ejected for hitting LeBron in the balls. Here is what Michael Wilbon, Michael Wilbon had to say on Dylan Brooks. There's nothing lamer and softer and more gutless than running your mouth and then blaming other people because you are too scared <laughs> to stand by your words. I didn't think Dylan Brooks was gutless, but he appears to be, particularly when he puts on the big stupid glasses. You run your mouth, you stand by your words, or you are a chump. Sir, Mr. Wilbon did not hold back for a second. Dylan Brooks is going the worst route, but now he's trying to get sympathy from us after getting eliminated by the warriors last season brooks says they know we're going to come every single year we're young and they're getting old you know you set yourself up what's getting old here yeah the whole, dylan brooks the whole shtick 
is getting old. So personally, what would you like to see? Dylan Brooks shut up or Dylan Brooks embrace being a villain? I'm here for one of the two, but come on, in between? Anyway, shout out to the Los Angeles Lakers. I really think they have a chance to make the Western Conference Finals this year. I really think Anthony Davis has that dog in him, baby. We are on number three right now with a team that no longer seems like they have any kind of chance. I've made a video in the past on the Clippers about how they may be cursed. I'm trying to bring that back. Now, the thing is people don't like to believe in curses, which I understand, but the Los Angeles Clippers would be the one team. And it's here where I'm going to, I think probably take an opposite side of what a lot of people may be thinking. So at the end of the day, Kawhi has been averaging 50 games in the seasons he's been playing, right? With the intention of playing in the playoffs. It hasn't worked. It has not worked. And so fans, of course, are frustrated. Who wouldn't be? At what point have we ever actually questioned while Kawhi is out there that that man is not killing himself, giving everything he possibly can on that court? He gets paid a tremendous amount, yes, but he's gone through every single rehab. He has done every single thing he possibly can to get back. It just seems like his body is failing him. And is it his fault that the Clippers took that chance on him? There are layers to this, right? Yeah, we should absolutely hold athletes accountable who are sitting out when they can't play. But what happens when you just physically can't play? It's a different story if we don't believe him. Kawhi Leonard should be on the list of one of the worst superstars this game has ever seen. You know, you're load managing him all through the season. We know that the, the injuries are legitimate. They're not fake. We got that. We understand the hard work that he puts in trying to get himself ready or whatever. But when you think about his personality, selling the game, promoting the game, promoting the Clippers fan franchise. If you're Steve Ballmer and Lawrence Frank, how long are you gonna continue to put up with this? All right, this is ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. No, we love him because he's the quiet superstar. Then he gets all the criticism in the world. When Kawhi was leaving San Antonio and just so happened to take a pit stop into Toronto and win an NBA championship and give it his all while he was there. Why are we questioning Kawhi Leonard's character at all? To be honest, in between going to Los Angeles, the move that he ultimately wanted to make for himself, right? And wins a title because of how hard he works. Stephen A brings it up and then also says that now he's not selling like what the Los Angeles Clippers brand because he's too quiet of a player, which of course the Clippers knew they were getting going into this. This is a Los Angeles Clippers roster that without Paul George has a ceiling anyway. So it really feels like we're just dragging Kawhi right now. I agree. He's unreliable in that. I wouldn't trade for him. I would be very afraid, but to say he's one of the worst superstars the game has ever seen is very disrespectful. He is not one of the worst superstars the game has ever seen. If anything, Kawhi Leonard is one of the most tragic superstars the game has ever seen. So I'm not going to pile on Kawhi. I feel for Kawhi. I'm more about the debate of adding him to a list of a guy like Tracy McGrady, someone who ended up leaving something on the table career-wise because of their injuries. Because when Kawhi is on the court, he is nothing short of spectacular. And there we have it. Coors Light number whatever. It does not matter. We are on a new grind Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Please subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I really enjoyed making this video. I really enjoy just doing new things. So comment down below what you want me to do. I mean, end of the day, I'm just trying to do new things, get some new energy going. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're already subscribed, thank you for supporting. You are awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. I got weenies. I do want to go to a club, so I'll stay for, I'll stay for a while.